it's been a little bit of a journey to be here today to record this video. I don't know about you and your realities and how complicated it is that it has been for you. It has certainly been a little more complex for me than I maybe had anticipated for my months of July. Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about a current unfolding of mine with um, engineer travels. And we know here the engineering of our lives is very extreme and very strong. And I haven't traveled much since maybe beginning of 2020. But in June, I did travel. And of course, this travel was engineered like, like most of, of my travel. Now, I did meet some friends of mine who are real on the way. But this is the part that I built around the first impulsion. And this still has to do with programming that is not entirely fully resolved, I would say. Uh, and it's still linked to part of my past that have been used extensively to derail and distract me from doing what I'm here to be doing and what is my sense of purpose here, which is like my most important, the most important part of me is my, my, my project and what I create with Aria Percy. So I had a thought that um, only if this, I mean, I don't, I've been part of the music electronic scene, the festival, it was part of the engineering in my life and around me, especially from my mid twenties to my early thirties. And I mostly extracted from this scene, but you know, there is, there are still some associations and not everything is to be thrown away with all the scenes we are part of and you know you can meet here and there some beings who are who are touching you and this was the case for one of the dj i, I believe he's real asleep but real i cannot follow him on social media because there is too much programming that is streaming but he can make really surprising beautiful music he's been innovating i mean he's been exploring innovative way from also himself being caught into the music electronic scene and then exploring more with his music, including with an orchestra, which I think it was a very nice addition. So he, it happens that after the thought that I had about, you know, that that might be the, 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 the only person that I would still move to be seeing, it happens that a, a concert was organized not, not so far from where I am. I mean, still in another country, but doable, you know, by driving. So, you know, it's been a few years I've stopped to go to festivals my life got hugely derailed with this scene and different handlers that were sent to me as well. And also the underground party scene, you know, uh, a lot of reels are being cut into layers of that. And I spent a few years in different hive minds. I mean, especially connected to one major hive mind um, which was connected to a um, quite major handler, MK Ultra handler of mine during my, my, the end of my 20s. 
So I didn't look for this scene at the beginning to, it wasn't really in my interest. I was introduced to it by a dark real who is choosing the dark side of the force here. And I was led and also kept into it through several other handlers, whether they were roommates of mine, ex-partners, um, former friends who were handlers and who were encouraging me to stay in the hive mind and stay in the programming. And it's often a reason why as me, maybe you have to break ties with people because you can feel that they are enabling the abuse of you and they are not encouraging you to really break free. You know, they're not, they're not encouraging the real you in resistance about who you are, they will only create your outer parts, for example. So these former handlers who introduced me to this kind of scenes, they're still deep in it. Uh, I wasn't aware how deep in it they were still because I mostly have broken ties with most of them and i'm not i'm not really happy to be seeing that they are still so deep into it but it validates why i left the hive mind and why i stopped contact also with these handlers who were triggering my programming and encouraging me to be in alters in the meantime you know, years have gone by and I visited many different hive minds and cult types environments, been cut into some layers and some here and there, not for too long, though still too long to my taste. The truth is that festivals are infested with, you know, complex webs to navigate, especially if you're real, you you're gonna find a lot of engineering around you everywhere you go. Festivals are crowded. That's very easy to send you many different things and to interrupt you very often as well. And in my even in my best festival, I still had to battle a lot with the engineering that was organized around me and mind control and attempt of access. Also, the music scene, the festival scene is also generally quite mixed with a lot of beta sex kitten programming. And I add a spirited real handler. I mean, she's a real who is consumed by beta sex kitten and who was sent specifically to me as a roommate uh, to trigger dormant programming and she was using extensive love bombing techniques um, towards me, but uh, there was a great degree of torture to be around her at that time. And I remember that very strong. She does still use the same love bombing techniques, you know, to hook into people and keep them in her cult because this is, this was, and this is a cult of personality. And cult of personalities are dangerous. And people get seduced for egotic reason to agree to create these kind of cults. And they're not often aware of the degree of torture that it's creating in the lives of others. So this concert that I'm mentioning with the DJ and the orchestra, uh, it was end of last year that I became aware of it and booked my ticket that I decided to go back then, but um, it was May of this year and I had a feeling I had to cancel, which I did, sold my ticket, cancel even my visit to the city 
But around that, I had organized a, tr a trip because I'd never seen the Swiss mountain. And I have different friends living not too far away. So I could just stretch to pay them a visit. But so it's great that they were, there was six months between the time I booked the ticket, the time I sold them, because, you know, all of that has to be dealing with unresolved programming and all the reels have a lot of unresolved programming to be dealing with. That's how sometimes, you know, you, you're ending up taking decisions that are not really you, accepting things that are not really you, that's going to derail you for three weeks or more, you know, accepting things that you know are not good for you and things like that. And you notice that your programming is getting access when you do things that have nothing to do with your path, nothing to do with your core spirit, that are the old you, that it doesn't really sound like you anymore, things like that. So to get on this road trip, I had my furry companions, uh, Shirin and Suna, but we had barely time to connect while I was awake because it was so hectic to drive so many thousands of kilometers in such a short, short amount of time. I had conveniently booked to spend the night near the lac Lausanne in Swiss. And conveniently, it's where a lot of the CERN facilities are. So, you know, the programs are always using your programming to bring you close to different areas uh, or underground facilities as well, if, if it would be convenient for you to be reprogrammed. Now, this time, it, I have different experience of reprogramming or being accessed. And I will go over some more in this recording. But this time, it was not in my daytime reality that I've been reprogrammed. It was in the frozen time, in the you know, in the time that's been wiped from my consciousness in, you know, that's where you also find the abductions and stuff like that. But I can feel on my consciousness during the months of July that something has been changed in my parameter, internal parameters, and that it's been harder, that some things I cannot keep up with that were easy for me to do before leaving some simple things from reality, you know, and that, you know, I used to be able to do twice as much as I've been able to do during the months of July. And I've seen many different, I mean, not so many, but different beings being reprogrammed the last two years, quite severely going along with the program, some also with the beta sex kitten. Um, and also I've seen them being I see some being being encouraged in their beta sex kitten with different word, word triggers and encouragement in, in certain types of behaviors. So during that road trip, I changed my plan before. I made it shorter, canceled a few things. And I did not stay, I did um I did not end to stay at this location. Um, you know near the CERN facilities, I changed my plan. I stayed hundreds of kilometers away from this place. Still, I drove to Switzerland. I crossed, I mean, I drove, I drove close by to this place. And each time I was in Switzerland, I felt like I wanted to leave. I felt constricted within the mountains. I did not enjoy any of the Swiss beauty. I went through that tunnels where there was like this huge, um, Masonic kind of opening celebration a few years ago. It's a very long tunnel. You're driving there for 20 minutes at least. And it's not a nice feeling. Though these tunnels are very rich, I was preferring some of the Italian uh, crappy 
poor tunnels. They they were they did not have the same feeling. So you know you pick up a lot of different energies with what's going on under the cover of you know what's presented in your in our realities. So end of June was also a time where I had to, I started to be dealing with a big derailment program. You know, these were beings that could be accessed easily and moved easily whenever the time would be convenient for it to collapse. So it would take me a lot of time to, I mean, I would have to redirect my attention for a few weeks. And so that's when the programs decided it was time for that. So I think it's a combination of different things. And I've been reflecting on all the mind controlling influences during my travels. Generally, in the past, I've noticed daytime access or daytime influences. It's the first time it's so covert. I mean, it's been happening also in the in the past, but here there was not much in my daytime reality that could explain such difficulties. And in my travels, I've been usually sent different handlers or sometimes they were also spiritless distractions who were also handlers uh, who are sent for us to bond with them. Uh, they, they are distraction from what is important and you, you know, they delay and it's always about delaying your work from one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month. And it's postponed to the next month and next month they come up with something else to derail you and you know so it's always postponed and time time is passing and you know a lot of us feel like we're here for also the legacy of our signature and sometimes we feel like we have so little time to work on it the money program is also linked to all of that, of course. You know, so it's construct, it's built this way. It's for the readers to be overwhelmed and have barely any time, any space. I also had other types of unwanted accesses of my wiring and reprogramming events as well. There was a lot of engineering with my travels and my first trip was engineered by dream seeding. I met a very specific handler, was in the second half of my 20s and he triggered a lot of dormant layers of monarch programming. This was also a very, not, not ex, yeah, just around that time was also a very vulnerable time in my life. As my mother was in great distress and it was extremely hard to witness a being that I really love and cared about um, and, you know, accept what was, what was happening to her and what led to her suicide um, a little while after. A few years later, I think after the departure of my mother, I was in a very abusive relationship with a handler who had no empathy. And I was consulting a Belgian hypnotherapist who was recommended by um, my former redactor in chief for the magazine I used to work for, who was also a handler. And so the boss kind of advice for me to consult this hypnotherapist and she's she's a workout so she used so she has this signature of spirit but she's now completely used as a as a as a handler and she i have a rep, an episode of complete amnesia with her when we were supposed to be working on the trauma around my my mother's death so a lot of therapists are being used to reprogram us and they often can 
the access to access us as well. I shared also about some more subtle layers of reprogramming. I was working with a Shetsu practitioner who I ended up discovering she's Draco and she was doing some kind of weird reprogramming with my body when she was practicing with my meridian line. And there was also some, some weirdness and there were other therapists and I, I did cover that a little bit more in depth in a previous video. So many of the experiences we go through are indeed reprogramming because they happen with people who are unconsciously most of the time reprogrammer, gamekeepers and handler, handlers. And you also find that a lot in the plant medicine scene, for example, a lot of, you know, keeping you in control. Um, I had one time I, when I used to work with some enteogenics, which I don't do anymore. Uh, and they come with also problems and, and traps of agreements and different things like that but thanks to them certain antigenics I could become uh, aware more quickly of the control energy present just around my field put by other people um, generally dark reels and whenever I find a thing uh, it's instant the relationship shift and usually the also, they don't like that I've been finding out who they really are. They know I know. They can feel it. They have abilities. Uh, they know I know what they truly do and who they truly are and what they're truly about. And they don't like it. So it's very interesting to observe how the dynamic quickly change. And then, you know, you're really hitting the core of, you know, what you're really dealing with. Now, another time I was in a hive mine, again in Southeast Asia or Bali. This was more recent years, um, you know, around a cult leader, you know, how they present themselves, they desire devotion, they are into ego, they are generally money-oriented. At that time, I was also led to a million held false healing center where there were experimentation done on me and my consciousness and mind control techniques were used as well. This was arranged by engineered synchronicities that were, that were leading me to that center. Uh, and it was linked to previous engineering in my life, uh, former hive minds I was connected with that connected me to new hive mind and new dark ne networking. And even if I knew, for example, that a person making suggestion to me, I was already picking up that there were many <laughs> wrong things with her back then, but... And I didn't go entirely for a suggestion, but I still ended up spending time in this center because it was a beautiful location, because they had the best menu of the island. And that's how you get into trouble. And when I was there, I remember finding myself in a situation where I was not fully able to extract myself or to place a boundary or to take distance. So whenever we're finding ourselves in these situations, it's important to further analyze what's been going on and asking, keeping on asking ourselves, how did I end up you know, creating this for myself or letting this being created for myself? When I was in the island of Copanyang, there were 
handlers everywhere. I mean, it's pretty easy on this island because it's very easy to engineer, you know, drawing people there, drawing handlers as well. Mix of reels and handlers and some reels are also handlers. Actually, many reels are also playing a lot of handling roles. And you know, these stories where, you know, you have a lot of engineering, one thing leading you to the next. And though I had stopped entogenic at that time, there was an engineered proposition from the metric system that was um, romantical, that was trying to be pushed into my corner of reality. Uh, that was encouraged as well by a false mentor at the time that was not really an important handler on my past, but I spent a little, I mean, I quickly became aware of the cult type environment around her. So, you know, how a non-spirited romantical relationship with a, with a lot of mirroring, but no core that is synchronized by the matrix computers led me to also connect again with entogenic that I don't think they're really doing what we think they are doing. There is a lot of, I mean, it will always be more potent to work without, to work with intention and consciousness without. And they can also lead, I mean, I've been testing some things also with auras and I see the colors that are coming up and it's not true healing that is coming up. Sometimes it's, you know, kind of layers of this kind of false love or kind of false kind of bliss state, these kind of things. That's what we found there. So... I talk about this entogenic because I asked to be shown how the hell did I ended up with again in these kind of settings and they showed me my my programming all the wires that they use constantly to access us they rail us at the time I was also interacting with dark e dark reels as as you know healers or people I was exchanging in sort of therapy sessions and later I discovered they were also handlers like a great percentage of who's around us if we're real are handlers depending on how quick we are at deprogramming but it keeps on coming as well and more refined version as well. One of these handler also used um, spells of reprogramming or something meant to create amnesia during one of the supposed healing session that I was uh, having with her Luckily, I didn't entirely forget. I could remember, but they have altars. I'm not sure they're even aware of what they are doing. Most of them believe they are doing a good job and that they are truly helping others. But they generally do more damages than good. And at the time, I was also living a hive mind environment that was online. I was being castigated and you know how they try to make you appear a certain way that you know you're not uh, because they are threatened and they also are threatened if differently according to who you are but I have the ability to create content and to put my experience into words and 
to write about it. So they usually know that. There was also attempts of reprogramming and kind of putting that control energy in the field in you know yoga centers. I've talked about that in the past and also in some of my private modules where I go over the different signatures you know of things I encountered and being I have encountered as well. And you know at the time I was maybe dismissing a little bit the darkness that was going that was actually going on. Wasn't putting fully two and two together with the extreme amount of hidden stress that I was uh, that I knew my body was accumulating due to unseen energies and agreement and things that are covert and that we don't realize or remember can happen also between time sometime. In 2020, I had a real access brutal in my daytime reality. It was the most brutal I have known in my daytime reality. And it led to being reprogrammed also during the nighttime due to the agreement that happened in my daytime reality. Um, there was also a clear switch with alters being accessed, at least one alter that I'm aware of, um, and being put in a programmable delta state as well that was preparing me also for more reprogramming during the nighttime. And just during that episode, I was also interacting with another former handler of mine who also programmed things in me. And at the time I already found that it was strange that this handler would bring up certain things while I was in a suggestive state. And this handler knew that, that I was in a suggestive state. And the things have been handy later on the past to create more engineering um, in a very distorted and subtle way. During that access episode, I felt like a zombie for a week. I could barely do anything. I mean, when I mean anything, I mean just basic things like doing the dishes and, you know, everything was really like the day would pass that I was feeling really hypnotized. And that thing that, I mean, I go in detail about what happened that in one of the module I have on my website, it's in the single classes, but just to sum it up, um, I was connected to a hive mind online with a very dark handler. He's one of the darkest on the scene with the darkest network around. And I think in spirit is barely there anymore. Um, he's definitely not, you know, who is, um, you know, how do you call that? He's, uh, cult followers believe he is and so because of being connected to this person this person basically connected me to someone who was present in my geographic reality because this is someone from from the U.S. connecting me here in Belgium to someone who can access me in person right so this was a lot of work to recover from I you could see, you know, you could see things if you were looking at a, a past footage of mine from that time. Uh, you know, these things cannot fully hide. So this access can, this type of access can happen now 
in 2021, I was also accessed by a, a former client who was also a handler. And after the 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 exchange, I've instantly fallen sick. My immunity was um, was accessed, and she had alters trained in the SSP. She's or I mean, she's not conscious. She's being used for that, but that's what's really happening. And that's why, you know, people like me, we place boundaries with certain beings and they don't understand why we place some boundaries with them because we can feel the access coming in and they take it personally. They don't think there's anything wrong with them. They have programming that, and I mean, it's programmed within, within a lot of us how, when we feel rejected, we start to dis dis distort, deflect. Um, so most of these beings are not aware, but there is a good reason why we place boundaries with different kinds of beings. It's because, you know, what they are truly being used for and the impact they have on our, on our consciousness and in our lives. So... If the programs cannot access you daytime, they can always take you or make you come close to a convenient underground facility to conveniently reprogram you, try to slow you down, sabotage your progresses. This way, I was also brought to California near many underground bases of the US, you know, also at different times, not only once, but uh, twice. When I visited the West Coast, I was under tight handling at the time. And in a more recent California trip, it was like I could barely escape the handling, the engineering around me. And this trip was almost 100% handling. Uh, but I learned a lot and I wrote about it extensively as well. And I see the engineering playing in the life of many other reels. I also had clients trying to get me bonded with new handlers that were sometimes MK Ultra handlers quite skilled in what they are doing. Other clients, former clients trying to access my programming, trying to derail what I'm doing here. And the agreements that we sign in the daytime have an influence with the rest. So the less we sign these agreements in the daytime, the, the safer we are. And, you know, maybe you have an episode like me, like the one I've been facing where, you know, it's hard to remember the, the entire routine you were busy with and how efficient you were. It's hard to be resisting the pressure. You notice you're not able to do as much as you were doing. And you're not able to be as much on top of your game as you were being. The programs know perfectly well how to access us. Where are the weaknesses, the weak spots? Where it's hard for us to express and walk in our self-authority? And many enders are sent to us to keep us on our weakest timeline while pretending they are our friends, while they sabotage us, they betray us. And usually they have no idea of the darkness taking over them and what they are being used and the torture they are creating in the life of others. Many are so skilled at playing the victim Oh, they love this game, I have to say.
attempts of reprogramming are numerous and happen every single day in our realities. Then we are mind wiped about our progresses. We forget where even our boundaries were standing, you know, a month before. So I was discussing with a friend, you know, what is really happening under the cover life of our travels. And many of us have an intuitive knowing that it's way more than it seems. <laughs>